Hello everyone, today I'm going to discuss to you about how to write an effective thesis result, discussions, summary, conclusions, and recommendations. This is one of the topic in the research and data analysis. I am Cheryl M. Esguera, taking up the course of Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics. These are the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the participants are expected to apply some tips and examples on how to write the results and the discussions of the thesis. Next one is, give some key points and examples on how to write an effective thesis summary, conclusions, and recommendations. After collecting and analyzing your research data, it's time to write the results section. The opening paragraph of the thesis results section should briefly restate the thesis question or questions. Then, present the results objectively as text, figures, or tables. In presenting the results of your study, it varies of what research methodology you are using. Is it quantitative research or qualitative research? What is quantitative research? Quantitative research refers to any information that can be quantified, counted, or measured and given a numerical value, while qualitative research is descriptive in nature expressed in terms of language rather than numerical values. First, we're going to talk about quantitative research and how we're going to present the result. Present the result from experiments and a statistical test, usually in the form of tables and figures such as graphs, diagrams, and images with any pertinent findings emphasized in the text. The results are structured around the thesis question or questions. Demographic data are usually presented first in this section. When we say demographic data, these are information such as age, race, ethnicity, gender or sex, marital status, income, education, and employment. You can easily and effectively collect these types of information with survey questionnaire. For each statistical test to use, the following information must be mentioned. The first one is the type of analysis used, for example, Man Whitney U test or multiple regression analysis. Second, a concise summary of its result, including descriptive statistics such as means, medians, and modes, and also the inferential statistics such as correlation, regression, and p-values, and whether the results are significant. It is also important to mention any trends or differences identified through comparisons and also how the findings relate to your research and if they support or contradict your hypothesis. Next, we're going to discuss about qualitative research on how we're going to organize or present the result. Present the results around key themes or topics identified from your data analysis and explains how these themes evolved. The data are usually presented as text because it is hard to present the findings as figures. For each theme presented, you are going to describe the following. The first one is the general trends or patterns observed. The second one significant or representative responses and the last one is 
relevant quotations from your study subjects. We're going to discuss also the general guidelines for figures and tables. The use of figures and tables is highly encouraged because they provide standalone overview of the research findings that are much easier to understand rather than wading through dry text mentioning one result after another. These are the general guidelines for figures and tables. The first one is, figures and tables must be interpretable independent from the text. Next, number the tables and figures consecutively in the order in which they are mentioned in the text. Next, all tables and figures must be cited in the text. Also, provide a clear descriptive titles for all figures and tables. Lastly, include a legend to concisely describe what is presented in the figure or table. We have here also some guidelines for figures. The first one is, label the figure so that the reader can easily understand what is being shown. Next, use a consistent font type and font size for all the levels in the figure panels. And the last one is, all abbreviations used in the figure artwork should be defined in the figure legend. We have also some table guidelines. The first one is, all table columns have heading. Next, all abbreviations used in the table should be defined in the table footnotes. And lastly, all numbers and text presented in tables must correlate with the data presented in the manuscript. We have here an example of a quantitative result presented in a graph. And this is an example of qualitative results. Next, we're going to discuss about some tips on writing the discussions. So what comprises the discussions? Here's what should be present in the discussion part. The first one is trends and spatial differences. What is trends? Trends refer to changes over time. Are your results showing an increasing, decreasing, or just plain constant direction? This should be evident in the graph that you presented. What is spatial differences? Spatial differences refer to the differences in the space or location within the same time frame. Is there a significant difference between the two groups examined? Is there a difference in the morphological measurement of one group of animals obtained from one location compared to another group? These are questions that explore spatial differences. The second one is insightful interpretation of results. Ponder deeply the results of your study and make an eligible statement of your interpretation using the body of evidences at hand. This is where you cite evidences obtained by other authors. You either confirm or affirm other people's work or refute using your own findings. The third part in our discussion is generalizations. Be on guard in writing your generalizations. Make sure that the data you analyzed can be extrapolated or will allow you to predict somehow the behavior of one variable. How enough is enough, you may ask. If your data has a low variability as indicated by low variances, then it is possible that additional measurements will not change whatever trend you have. Lastly, always match your generalization with whatever results you have. 
Conversely, do not generalize when you have very few samples. Don't say 50% when you actually have only 2, 3, or even 4 samples described in your study. The fourth part in our discussion is exemptions to the rule. In scientific inquiry, not all things or factors are discovered. There are always unknown or unaccounted areas. This is the reason why everything is founded on probability. You should never say proof as a matter of contention. Proof means 100% sure, which never happens. There are always expected deviance from the norm. The fifth part in our discussion is the reasons why things happen. Things happen due to something else. Reaction arises from action. These are called determining factors. Are there reasons why your results follow a trend? Is it evident in your study? If yes, then say it and explain why so. Again, based on your observations or evidence. You may guess, but make it educated. Review the literature and use it as leverage for advancing your hypothesis or inference. Does your findings support or refute what has been done so far? Does it support previously advanced hypotheses? Remember that there is no such thing as a simple explanation of a complex phenomenon. Find one that is most aligned to your findings. It would be interesting to be in the controversial side as long as you have done your study systematically and bias is reduced to a minimum. The last part in our discussion is the contribution of your work. What are the important things that your study has contributed so far in view of what has been laid out in the body of literature. Why is your work important and what things need to be investigated further? If any other questions arise, then your work has helped unravel other areas worthy of investigation. Lastly, the human has an absolute understanding of everything, but if your work has the potential to make life better, then it's a great accomplishment. The next topic that we're going to discuss is how to write an effective thesis summary. What is a thesis summary? Alright, a thesis summary is a document that summarizes the points of a thesis. Basically, the purpose of the summary is to give the reader an overview of the main points of your thesis. Here are some tips on how we're going to write an effective thesis summary. The first one is, when you're summarizing a math-related paper, Make sure to highlight the main conclusions and how they were arrived at. Second, tell the reader why these conclusions matter by explaining its wine with logical statements and definitions from the original document. The third one is, include a brief conclusion paragraph that ties everything together and highlights the key points covered throughout your work. The fourth one is, if your thesis is text-based, make sure to include important points throughout the body of your work. Lastly, 
Remember that you are writing a summary, so don't use hard words or complex sentence structures. Your goal is to be understood by anyone who reads it in the future. The last part that we're going to discuss today is thesis conclusion and recommendations. Here are some tips on how we're going to write a thesis conclusion. The first one is, clearly state the answer to the main research question. Number two, summarize and reflect on the research. The third one is, make recommendations for your future work on the topic. Number four, show what new knowledge you have contributed. And lastly, it should be concise and engaging. Aim to leave the reader with a clear understanding of the main discovery or argument that your research has advanced. Here are some tips on how we're going to write a thesis recommendation. The first one is, should be concrete and specific. Avoid beating around the bush. The second one is, it should be connected to your conclusion. Your recommendation should logically support your conclusions and should be achievable. The best preparation for good work tomorrow is to do good work today by Albert Hubbard. Thank you so much for listening.